Hello, my name is Sam Feltham and welcome to uh, Expert Interviews on Smash the Fat. With me today is prominent health blogger, Yale University educated author of the Low Carb Survival Guide, Adam Kozloff. How are you doing, Adam? Great, Sam. Thank you again for having me on. I'm very excited to be here. So. Absolutely, it's a real pleasure because um, we got introduced to each other from from my uh, original 5,000 calorie experiment, and then you emailed me, asked me to get you get me on your uh, podcast, um, which is a great podcast. People, people can check can check that out um, on iTunes, and um, yeah, then we just started emailing each other and getting to know each other a little better, and um, yeah, it's been a, absolutely fantastic to get to know you. Well, likewise. I mean, I, when I saw you do that, I, I got saw a link from Jimmy saying that you were doing this experiment. I was like, this is mm -hmm. the best thing I've ever seen. Uh, you know, and I'm so happy <laughs> it turned out the way it did because it's kind of like what you thought it would turn out to be. But, uh, you know, I remember emailing mm -hmm. Gary Taubes, uh, you know, about it. I was like, there's this guy who's going to do this experiment. He was so <laughs> likewise thrilled. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I just, because when I first got into this, I thought I, I thought so someone should do the bacon challenge, which is like eat nothing but bacon for 30 days straight and see what happens, which is kind of what you did. Yeah, essentially. Essentially, maybe I'll do that one further down the line. <laughs> right, right. Uh, and see, see if my uh, my bro my blood profile improves or anything, yeah. uh, <laughs> or changes in any way. Right, because um, bacon that one food where everyone thinks is like a, you know... This is it, isn't food it? Food, right? Yeah, yeah, because yeah, um, we have... Um, a very common thing over here is something called bacon butties, which is just a bacon sandwich, um, because it's bacon butter sandwich. Um, and you know, when people say, yeah, I just eat bacon butties all the time, and you know, I'm thinking in my head when people say that the reason they put on weight is because they ate bacon sandwiches, I'm thinking, you know, it's not the butter and bacon that's the problem there, it's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. <laughs> but anyway, um, right. apart from that, um, you uh, you started in the health blogging world with a with a website called Why Low Carb Diets Work, and it was sort yeah. of a bit of a a bit of a tribute to Gary Tobbs's Good Calories, Bad Calories, and then it took its own form, and then you came with um, Calorie Gate right. and Escape from Calorie Gate. Um, <laughs> Where you, people can check you out, caloriegate.com, and yeah, yeah it, it explain to us sort of you know how you really got into this, and you know what what are your thoughts now on on health and fitness. Well, you know, I'm not a you know I went I went to Yale for physics, and mm. I like I decided to come out to Los Angeles to do screenwriting, and like I got into screenwriting, and, like I got into screenwriting, and I wrote for Mel Brooks and did other some other stuff, but I was just fascinated with science still. And when I read Taubes' book, I was just, I was blown away. It just kind of like, is this, first of all, I changed my diet, I lost weight, my, you know, cholesterol improved, et cetera, which happens to a lot of people. But second of all, I was just kind of fascinated by the cultural implications. Like, how is it that we have this, how is it that our, you know, diet and nutrition stuff got so messed up? And, and more than that, like, there seems like to be this, not a magic fix, but a, certainly like something that works for 80% of people 80% of the time that people should know about. And so I felt it's like I had this call to action to be an evangelist. And the more I got into this kind of, and I, I was less into the low carb thing specifically, that mm -hmm. um, and I was into like the calorie concept because that that to me like I yeah. you know, agree with Tabs that it seems like it's root evil. And um, so I just wanted to spread the word. And, and as the more I like did my independent research, the more I realized like first of all how you know deep it goes, and second of all like the, there are implications that go beyond diet. Like one thing I kind of you know, top, I don't know if I discovered this, but like we've been kind of into is the idea that prescription medications uh, often cause weight gain in, 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 in people, and most people blame that weight gain on, on the calories. Like, so, you know, you go to these forums and you're like, I've gained weight on Zoloft or, you know, some SSRI, and the people will be like, well, I've gained all this fat, I'm starving myself, I'm going to the gym more, it's not coming off, or I'm even, I'm even cutting my carbs, it's not coming mm -hmm. off. And part of the problem is that, like, these drugs impact insulin and other hormones directly. And so if you're thinking from the cal calorie mentality, you'll never solve the problem versus if you're thinking from, hmm, you know, hormones and whatever, those are primary. They, they cause what, you know, you call the line scale stuff, which is a brilliant analogy, um, mm -hmm. a brilliant metaphor. And, you know, if you're not going to address that, you're not going to solve the problem. And so, you know, there's all these implications. You know, like 100 million people are on prescription meds in the United States, and who knows how much influence that's having in the obesity epidemic. So I feel like if we're going to solve this crisis, this health crisis, we kind of need to 
think not in terms of calories, but in terms of the wine scale or Jonathan Baylor's, um, you know, clock sink or whatever. You know, pick your analogy, but like not the calories. Thing. Yeah, exactly. Because um, it's sort of it's a given if something is putting on weight or if it's uh, reducing in weight, it's going to be expending uh, more or less calories. That's sort of a given. But right. the, what, what, what are the underlying reasons for that? Um, and, a, and a great analogy, uh, going back to, back to Gary Torbs, is mm -hmm. um, the fact that if, if um, two kids came to a doctor, um, one is like, you know, seven feet tall and 300 pounds, right? Um, and then the other kid is just, you know, an average five foot eight or something and is 300 pounds. They've both um, been in the same positive energy balance and the doctor's going to say to the kid that's seven feet tall, you know, you, you're secreting too much growth hormone, you've probably got a tumor in your pituitary gland and stuff like this, but then... Um, you know, the the kid that's overweight due to their large fat tissue is exercising too little and eating too much. You know? <laughs> it's, it's crazy. You know, it's all down to hormones when it comes to a biochemical organism like us. Well, you know, it's, it's totally true. And I, I think one analogy that I came up with that's similar, similar is like a pregnant woman, right? You know, you know, in order for a pregnant woman to go from like 120 pounds to 150 during her pregnancy, she has to take in uh, 30 pounds more calories than she burns. Uh, I don't know what the, the, the translation of kilograms is, but the, uh, you know, she has to you know eat more and, and and or move less. But you know, she's eating more food. But I'm never going to grow a baby if I eat you know a lot of Big Macs. You know, uh, <laughs> no matter how many calories I eat. And like likewise, if you're pregnant and you don't want to be, starvation is not the answer. You know, and, and it's any kind of other growth. You know, you're growing too much hair. You're growing, you know, cancer. You're growing any kind of growth in the body that's not you don't want. You don't think about calories. You think about well, what's messing up my body on a on a cellular level. Absolutely, and you know, what's what is messing up our body in today's environment? Right. You know, and that's and that question is complex, and I agree we need science. And I, you know, as mm -hmm. much as I'm, I'm, you know, prone to put the blame on carbs and refined and sugar and refined carbs. Like, you know, I know a lot of people in the blogosphere into seed oils, like omega-6 mm -hmm. oils, and that's a problem. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm open to the idea of, like, prescription drugs and, like, who knows what other factors are involved. I think, to, you know, again, the 80-20 rule, like, what's the real problem? The main problem is probably, like, we're not getting enough real food, real fat, or eating too much sugar and refined carbs. I mean, that's probably, you know. Yeah, it's probably the, the majority or yeah. at least the the bullet in the gun um, right. is the sugar and refined carbohydrates. You know, that is the majority of the problem. And we've got all of these other things that we think are going on as well in terms of probably uh, too much stress, lack of sleep, yeah. uh, omega-3, omega-6 ratios with the polyunsaturated um, seed oils um, and also you know, grain-fed meat as well, possibly, right. um, and things like this, which is probably contributing to heart disease in some sense. But, um, so. yeah, the majority of the problem is sugar and refined grains. Right, right, right. You know, and, and, what's, and one thing that I, I'm so impressed and, like, very excited about your experiment and the one that's upcoming is that, like, because this, our obsession with calories is really at the root of this, the, the diet debate, like, we're not going to have a mm -hmm. sensible conversation about, like, well, what are the actual, you know, good calories and what are the bad ones until we kind of get over the calorie idea. And in, I feel like we need, it's a marketing problem as much as a science problem. It may be more a marketing problem than a science problem. And stuff that what you're doing is actually exactly what I think the world needs because, uh, you know, maybe not everyone will be convinced, but, you know, I'm sure a lot of people who saw your first experiment, with, you know, were pretty, like, blown away. They're like, maybe this is, uh, you know, maybe I should give some, some thought yeah, yeah. That, that 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 was the main thing from it. Um, it wasn't a, a clinical study or anything like that. It was, it was, um, it was an N of one experiment that was. Um, the whole point of it was just to get people thinking. You know, um, it wasn't really to disprove or prove anything, um, but just to get people thinking and yeah, give credence to you know what we put in our bodies. Um, it gives us a biochemical reaction and those biochemical reactions determine uh, what 
we do with that energy. Um, and I sort of I put it down to that whole, um, you know, if you're saying a calorie is a calorie when it com comes to eating food, it's like saying um, you can take a cyanide pill or an aspirin for a headache. Right. You know, they've got two very different reactions to They're the body. Pills, you know, whatever. <laughs> They're both pills. They, they they probably come in similar sizes, but you know, one's gonna kill you. The other one's probably gonna relieve the headache for some right. period of time. Both the headache. <laughs> <laughs> the side yeah, out. Yeah. You never have a headache again. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, it's it's really interesting, and um, you've sort of blogged on this profusely. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that you came out with is the low uh, low carb survival guide, right. which is a, a, a guide to surviving low carb. Because even though you know it, the low carb diet does tend to um, adhere to the biochemistry of people, right. um, we still have problems with it, don't we? Yeah, we do. I mean, I don't know. It's like hard, even hard for me as a zealot, you know. You know, you go to a party, and like I, got, I have two kids. You go to birthday parties, and there's cake everywhere. I wouldn't, you know, and and for before the cake, there's pizza and goldfish crackers, and like you know, this stuff is yummy. But like, you know, even even when you have the knowledge, like I shouldn't be eating this stuff. It's like it's just hard. You're socially awkward, and so I don't know. I wrote this guide to try and give people just a general overview of like you know how to how to apply this in a practical way. And you know, I had interviews with uh, Gary Tabs and, and Fred Hahn, who I mean. I know I know you're involved in the training world as well, but I um, one other kind of parallel epiphany I had in, in, in blogging in, in this blogging world is that um, you know a lot of the stuff we know about exercise also seems to be wrong. You know, before I read uh, Fred Hahn wrote this book with a uh, the, the doctor he is, uh, called Slow Burn um, Fitness, and mm -hmm. it's basically about how you know a lot of the exercise ideas we have are misguided, and that you know slow, safe weight training is apparently very good in terms of Building your strength and protecting your flexibility. Anyway, so Fred in, the, in, this, in this interview talks about that at length, and I've adopted his, his system, and um, you know, I've, I feel like I've never been stronger, and I, I only exercise like once a week. Uh, probably should do more, but you know, and the point is that like no, that's you know, so good. So, you know, you just you fit in as much as you can. You know, I mean, for for instance, yeah. I only do two strength training sessions a week. Right. You know, that's all you really need to do, especially if it's as as intense as you know um, Fred Hahn stuff and, and the stuff that I do. Yeah, I know, and you got and you and this is the thing that's like one of the great things I think about your program is that you're you're introducing both these concepts, and it's like if you do slow, safe, safe um, strength training, you know, probably like the way you teach it and Fred teaches it, and eat a good diet with real foods, like you're gonna go so far, and like you know, it's 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 these are simple solutions to complex problems, but I believe that sometimes that can happen in life, you know. Um, that not every complex problem needs a, a complex solution. Um, and I think when people look at, like, the, not just the obesity epidemic, but diabetes and cancer and all these problems, you know, they're very, very complex biological problems. Um, and, you know, the idea that you can fix this to a degree with diet and exercise sounds, you know, impossible, but I think you can. You know? We, I mean, we could probably wipe out most of the diseases if we all kind of just adopted these kind of you know, protocols. Absolutely, Un undoubtedly, Adam. Um, and the question is, how how could we do that? How can we do that? And what well, are those I mean, protocols as well? <laughs> right, 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 right. What are those protocols? I mean, yeah, I mean, those are great questions. And I think, you know, more science is needed, blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, this is a question I've been pondering and blogging about. Like, I mean, is it, I, don't, I don't know if it is possible to win this, win this battle. Because if you think about, like, a lot of people make analogy to smoking, right? So, you know, decades ago, we all thought smoking was good. It was good for your T-zone, is what they, the doctors used to say, um, which is a made-up concept. And they, you know, eventually we came to realize that smoking is not so good. It causes lung cancer, emphysema, et cetera, and we kind of withdrew our support. I mean, people still smoke, but it's not, you know, we've gotten better. But the problem with smoking is it's a binary choice. Like, either you smoke or you don't smoke. With eating... There are so many little micro debates about what is what constitutes safe eating, even within like the world that you know you and I occupy, which is like you know more like ancestral paleo, low carb, whatever you want to call it. That there's a lot of agreement. Um, there's still like debates about you know should you eat? Can you eat a cage? Do you have to your eggs have to be cage free, or can you get you know the plain eggs at the supermarket? You know what about steak? Does it have like you mentioned? Does it have to be you know 
you know, ra raise humanely without hormones, or can you eat the steak, the steak you find at the grocery store? And so, so on and so forth. So these little micro debates and macro debates, and it's, I think it's going to be a real challenge to get some kind of consensus. And even on the calorie issue, which to me is like a no-brainer, there's still a lot of uh, pushback. So I don't know how this is going to change because there's so many different concepts, um, and there's so there's just no you know harmony among. And um, I mean, one thing that like allows veganism or vegetarianism to flourish, I think, is not necessarily the, the correctness of it, but the simplicity of it. You know, if you, you everyone know you don't need to understand what a vegetarian diet is beyond like, oh, don't you don't eat meat? I get it. And the same thing with like, the calories. Just don't eat so much. You know, there it's a wrong idea, but it's simple and it's a good marketing message. So I'm trying to figure out what's this. I mean, what is the simple but correct message to put out there, other than, you know, a lot of what you know about nutrition and exercise is wrong. And I don't know the What do you think? Well, it's, it's really, really difficult because, <laughs> as you say, it's a, it's a completely yeah. different paradigm to um, right. what, we're, what we're used to because we're used to, you know, eat less, exercise more. That's how you cure being overweight. It's quite simple. <laughs> um, but, um, yeah, as you say, it's, it's really not that simple whatsoever and um, what we need to do I suppose is to get people just understanding some simple biology basically um, in terms of yeah. you know what happens when um, you eat carbs, what happens when you eat protein, what happens when you eat fat and just making people, getting people to understand that they have completely different biochemical reactions um, and then starting to get right. people and, to think and, about and that and that's going to be a long process, it's going to be a couple of decades before um, before we reach any sort of, you know, um, put any dent in, in the public arena on that I think. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I go through shifts of, sometimes, I, I, especially in the blogosphere, I just feel just like, dismayed. <laughs> like, I can't, I don't know how to explain, I mean, I, like, for instance, with your experiment, I don't know how, you know, I remember seeing some people after it say that, like, well, Sam ate a lot of nuts, and nuts are indigestible, therefore he was in calorie balance the whole time. The things that are this don't make any sense, like, you just, you know, it's not even, like, a potentially interesting refutation that just doesn't make sense and it's like against all that illogic what can you do yeah you know? that's it and um, you know people but when people go on low carb diets often like even nuts can be problematic um, right. due to their carb content as well so it's sort of you know you hit from we were, I was hit from both sides on that actually um, so that was a that was a, some interesting discussions went on there about the nuts. Maybe I'll try and try and just do the bacon challenge, you know, just so that it literally is five thousand calories yeah. worth of, of, uh, you know, just something like bacon or or whatever, you know, just eggs or something. Um, but yeah, anyway. Yeah. Or or um, challenge. Yeah. And the what? Sorry. I was going to say we could also. It was going to be the converse challenge, and this is something I, you know, I was talking about, which is the Mountain Dew challenge. Like the people who think that the calories, the calorie is a calorie. Well, why don't you just eat, uh, you know, let's say you're eating 2,700 calories a day. Why don't you switch like 2,500 of calories to Mountain Dew or to, to soda? You know, and see what happens to, to your body after four months of doing that. You know, you, should you be in energy balance that whole time? I don't know. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, if if I was to drink, well, just to have two and a half thousand calories worth of, of you know, Coke every day, you know, right. would I would I put on weight or wouldn't I put on weight? And um, my guess is that I'd probably put on weight. Um, and, you know, this would sort of be slightly backed up by the double burden of obesity, um, the fact that, you know, refugees who are, you know, in a calorie deficit are still becoming overweight and obese. Um, right. And, um, you know, you've even got malnourished kids who are malnourished when they're children and then as they grow up into uh, late adolescence and early 20s, then um, they become overweight and obese, you know, right. and with that, are you just saying, like, if, 
you believe purely in calories in, calories out, are you saying that, you know, they were completely malnourished for that entire time, right? So in the, in the calorie formula somewhere, um, they're going to be in like a massive calorie deficit somewhere, right. you know, and then, you know, just as they um, got to adolescence and um, early 20s, they just had a massive influx of food and put on weight like, after that. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what's, what's your logic there? Um, so, yeah. yeah, God knows. But anyway, what, what does a day in the life of Adam Kozlov look like in terms of uh, health and fitness? Well, how about this? First of all, I, I apologize. There's some like uh, construction outside. Do, should I close the, the window, or is that or leave it off? Oh no, it's fine. That's okay. fine. Um, day in life. Okay. Well, you know, in terms of like, working out, like I said, I, I work out once or twice a week using the kind of slow burn protocol. Um, and it's been, you know, so like I don't really go to the gym. I, I used to do yoga and running, and I just don't do that anymore. Um, I have two small kids, so it's like any time I can, you know, <laughs> I don't have that much time. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of eating, you know, I, I try, I eat, you know, I probably have like 50 or 60 grams of carbs a day. I try to eat real foods. Um, I'm trying to stay away from dairy. Um, you know, high fat, low carb, a moderate protein, like a lot of, um, uh, you know, burgers and eggs. And I make these almond muffins, which is, I like to have blueberries and a little Splenda and, I don't know, coconut oil in it. And it's, I like it. My wife's like, this is disgusting. But she, she likes, you know, she rather have like, you know, the real thing, um, and I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm kind of. It's like not just me. It's like, it's a, you know, keep protect them from you know bad food, but also like, not this crazy. You know, dad is like taking the, the the cake away at the birthday party. So it's 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 challenging. I mean, I know. I asked my my best friend actually uh, uh, lives right next to me. He also went to Yale. He he got me into this uh, you know low carb thing, and so he and I you know can go out and go to Indian restaurants and eat all you can eat, just, you know, tikka masala. <laughs> but so I have some people who, you know, who are you know, into it too. And I have a lot of, uh, I've convinced a lot of my friends and family to, to get on it as well, which is kind of nice. That's awesome, man. Just, I think just to shut me up, they're like, all right, I'll do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just give it a go, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> but, um, yeah, because family life. Um, in today's world is probably one of the most challenging things to keep a family healthy because um, yeah. often families are on a budget um, and you know they do want to help their children be healthy but often our governments are telling us that you know you need healthy whole grains and things like this to be healthy um, so you know how do you deal with that and especially the fact that you know um, children um, will throw a tantrum if, you know, they don't get sweets and stuff like that. Well, I mean, you know, this is the thing. Do, like, do you just hold your ground? I don't know. I mean, it's also one of those things, like, if you, that's why, like, I can't, I'm trying to say, there's, like, more, more, my kids love sugar, you know, and they know. I mean, Alexandra's like, I, sugar's bad for you. You know, I love brainwasher. But she, you know, will, like, go for it, you know, no matter what. And, Dad, can I have dessert or whatever? And uh, getting them to eat bacon or getting them to eat, like, you know, fat, just fat? It's so hard. It's really hard. And it, you ask any parent, like, they're honest with you, like, their kids will default to the carbs. Like, if they're fussy eaters, they're not fussy, in, like, you know, when it comes to bread or, you know, popsicles or what have you. They're fussy when it comes to, like, salmon or fussy when it comes to, you know, I don't know what else. And that means that, uh, you know, they are, uh, it, just, it just implicates the sugar and the, and the carbs. You know? I say it, it becomes very, very difficult, and I think it's a case of sort of trying to trying to be strong-willed and trying to sort of not push it onto them, but sort of you know just make that the only option, right? Um, perhaps, but I'm I'm not sure. I'm, I'm I'm I'll probably find out in the next ten years what happens with uh, trying to raise healthy children in today's world. <laughs> but, yeah. it, I mean, it's fun, but it's like I don't know. I, I don't. I I, I, can, I understand now why a lot of parents like default to feeding their kids crap because it's easier and the kids will, will be quiet. You know, if you want your, your kids having a tantrum, so not actually we have these things called uh, when you go to a restaurant we give uh, our kids STFU carbs, which you can figure out what that acronym is. Like if they're crying, you give them a roll, you know, and it gets them quiet. And you know, you extend that thinking, and you know, you can see I'll give them okay, your, I'll give you your candy if you just let me, you know, write an email. 
<laughs> yeah, this is it, isn't it? So it becomes a braving tool for many parents, I think, sort of yeah, yeah. candies and sweets and, uh, and things like that. Like, you can, you can have a piece of chocolate if you do this. Um, <laughs> things like that, which, which I don't know, is, is, is the most virtuous way to go about it. But it's the easiest way. <laughs> it gets it done. Mm -hmm. and, and being a parent is like about making compromises and finding, you know, some deep... Okay, you can watch, you know, one episode of Dora the Explorer, you know, if I can just, like, have, like, a, eat, like, a meal in peace or take a shower. You know, and it's like you're making these compromises and, you're, and you, you never thought you'd make. Uh, and you try not to make too many of them. Absolutely, absolutely. It's, um, it's very difficult, but sounds like you're doing a good job on the whole, Adam. Yeah, thanks, sure. so. Try. Sure. Hey, no worries, man. Um, so, um, are there any last words of wisdom um, to to all the viewers and listeners today um, in terms of health and fitness? Oh, you know, I have one last thing, and hopefully my computer's not going to like run out of me. Um, meditation. That's like the third pillar. It's something that's really helped me. Um, I try to meditate 45 minutes a day, some kind of mindfulness meditation. I think that's like a, another huge thing in terms of like making yourself feel good, being able to deal with, you know, all sorts of stresses. And actually, I think there's there is some science that suggests that it actually changes your brain structure, makes you happier. I certainly find like I need it to like you know just I, I, it like helps me get through the day and uh, you know it lifts your mood. So I would say you know safe exercise, strength training. You know, good whole foods, low carb, paleo diet, and meditation. You know, 30 minutes, 40 minutes a day, if you can. Those three things. You do that, you're going to be you know, rock it. Absolutely, you're going to be good as gold, as we say over here. Good as gold. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, where where can people find out more information about you, Adam? Uh, they can go to caloriegate.com. That's like caloriegate, like Watergate. Uh, www.caloriegate.com and um, that's the vlog I keep most active now, so I'm going to hopefully post more. I just, you know, I uh, got a lot of good interviews in the can, uh, yours and Jonathan Baylor's I got to put up, and, uh, you know, hopefully got a lot of great other guests coming on, so talking about some of these critical health and diet issues. Brilliant. Absolutely fantastic. And people can follow you on Twitter as well, at NoCarbsGo. Is that right, Adam? Yeah, NoCarbsGo. It's like the Arcade Fire song, uh, No Cars Go. <laughs> That's awesome, man. That's awesome. <laughs> love it, love it. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Adam. And um, yeah, I encourage everybody to go check out caloriegate.com and uh, you can get a copy of the black box uh, for free on that blog as well. Yeah, it's my free report. It kind of talks about the, the whole calorie thing, which your, your viewers probably understand. But, you know, it's like got some interesting, like, you know, analogies that they're, you know, I, I'm proud of it. Um, and I also encourage, I'm so excited to see your, uh, your experiment here. I really hope you're safe, and uh, I hope it goes well, whatever that, whatever that means. Absolutely. I'm, I'm looking forward to it as well, and it should be, uh, should be an interesting three weeks. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, I'll be, do I'll be doing exactly the same thing in terms of keeping it updated every single day and then having a bit of a roundup at the end and, and all that jazz. So, um, yeah, th th thanks a lot, Adam. I really appreciate you caring, mate. Yeah, I'm so excited. It's been great. Awesome. Well, thanks again, Adam, and I'll uh, and I'll speak to you soon, bud. Rocket. All right. Great. Thanks, Sam. Thanks for having me on. This is fun.